punch the timeline. Big energy coming to you live. What's going on, everybody? Loving this new intro music from my friend James Warren. Absolutely killing it. Thank you, sir. Welcome back to another episode of Punch the Timeline. Jared here. This week, two episodes drop. We've been kind of behind on the times because of, you know, life hitting us hard in the face. Here we are, as promised, doing a Sandman episode. Julie from the Behavior Source will be joining me later on. Next episode is a first for me. It is a creator interview. We'll be talking with Ed Cannell from Invasion from Planet WrestleTopia. Really excited to get that episode out. It was really fun to just sit back and talk about the creative process. It was really cool to talk about the old days of the territory systems of wrestling. So whether you're a comic book fan or a wrestling fan, I encourage you to check out my interview with him and to check out Invasion from Planet WrestleTopia, which has a Kickstarter going on right now. And for the Devin fans out there, we made a guest appearance on The Rambling Geek. Look for that episode coming out very soon. Talking Batman with the guys, Mike and Brian down in New Zealand. Big fans of them as always. We're going to take a quick break here and spotlight another podcast. And when we come back, my big talk with Julie from The Behavior Source on Sandman. Welcome to our channel, The Nerd Crusade. I'm Beastie Boy. I'm Table. I'm Red. It is I, Shino Brando. We discuss topics from across the nerdiverse, from video games, anime, comics, and more. And if you want to chat with us, you can find us on Twitter at Crusade Nerd, on Instagram at Nerd Crusade, on Twitch 8 p.m. Mountain Standard Time every single week. You can find us wherever podcasts are found by searching Nerd Crusade. And that's to be continued. Welcome back to another episode of Punch the Timeline. Jared here with Artie and Julie from the Behavior Source back with us once again. It's summer. It's summer! I'm so excited. We've been through quite a month due to the weather. If you weren't listening last month or last episode, a hailstorm took out the, our car windows, messed up our house. Not Insurance messed up our house. said it was a catastrophic event is the word they used to me. Yes. So we've had differing instances with our cars because I said screw it and drove to two hours to a safe flight auto repair and got my glass repaired and you did not i would, followed directions i guess and would you like to tell a story i mean i can if you want um names no. and dates and companies will not be named no um i was like well there's nowhere nearby that could fix the cars obviously like jared said because everybody in our city has hail damage so i drove my car i made an appointment to get the glass in my car fixed, I want to be really clear that I made an appointment and I dropped my car off at my appointed time. And I was told that someone would call me that day and let me know when I would, you know, have my car back and everything. Did not hear back. Didn't hear back the next day. Called. Didn't hear back. We'll call you back, you know. And then finally, like the day after that, this woman calls me and I'm going to call her Susan. Susan will be her name for our purposes. But Susan was not very pleasant. And she repeated the phrase, well, this is standard in the auto industry to me, probably like 14 times. So the auto industry version of that's not how we do it in Texas? I guess so. I was not pleased with her. And I'm just, I want to, I want to say that I'm very pleasant and I do not yell at retail workers because we've both worked in retail and I didn't like it when people yelled at me. So I, I wasn't like rude or anything. I'm just trying to get my car fixed. I just want my car fixed. And she wants to submit, like, a supplement to our insurance company, which is totally fine, I guess. But she didn't do it right. And so my car is just sitting there, hanging out, basically being held hostage. Because they they refuse to fix it while they're waiting on the supplement for the insurance. Ten days. Ten days um, of them refusing to fix my car because, you know, they're waiting for my insurance company to get back with them on their supplement. And come to find out... I call my insurance company, you know, and I'm like, hey, I thought they were being competent. No, no. Our insurance company has been spectacular. Would you agree? 
I would. They yes. w- they have been amazing, and everyone in our insurance company has been so kind. And our, someone from our insurance company called me the other day, and he's like, I just want to reassure you that this is not an issue on our part, that this Susan submitted this supplement incorrectly, and I'm like, I'm rage quitting at this point. I'm going to rage quit at this body shop. I'm going to take my car, I'm going to take my toys, and I'm going to go home because I'm done. And so I'm like, I call them, and I'm like, I'm going to come get my car. And they're like, well, we're going to get our manager. And I'm like, cool, whatever. She sends me a bill. We have money for the body work. We do. And we, I had a feeling there would be fees. You did. You were right. And we have, because I'm trying to keep it clean, we have FU money. So we were going to pay the FU money and leave the most horrendous Google review ever on them. Well, I mean, and I wasn't going to be like hateful. I was just going to be really honest. This is what happened because they held my car hostage for 10 days because she didn't do it right. And so they're trying to charge me like administrative fees and storage fees. It's over $500, this bill this woman gives me for storage fees because they stored my car because she did not submit the supplement correctly. And I don't know what happened between yesterday afternoon and this morning when I went to get my car. I went to get my car and one of my very, very amazing friends went with me um, for moral support because she was righteously enraged as well. And she was ready to yell at these people. <laughs> and I went in there and they all look very nervous. And she's like, and that'll, there'll be no charges today. And they went and got my car and they cleaned it off for me. And, you know, there's still not a window in it. It's still got glass chipped everywhere. But at least I have my car in my possession. And that woman was the nicest she'd ever been to me. So I don't know... If our insurance man like got on like got on her, I don't know if he called her boss. He was displeased that she was trying to bill him for five hundred dollars for storage fees when she's the one who didn't do it right. So I did not have moral of the story. Ending to this big tall tale is I did not have to pay it. My insurance company did not have to pay it. I got my car back ten days later, still not fixed, but at least it's in my possession, you know. And we have a plan. We've got a plan. So my anxiety level has come down probably 14 notches and it's summer break last day of work was today so so excited got my glass of wine i'm ready i'm ready to podcast with you the saga of our cars the saga of our house our poor house to be continued we're not like in a damaged home it's just like we need a new roof and everyone in this development needs a new roof so the sound of is going to be the soundtrack of our summer yeah and I worry, like, every time it rains now, I'm worried it's going to, like, leak on us. But it's not. It's okay. We're going to be fine. Once again, we are joined by our dog, Artie. Cranky. Cranky butt Artie. So last episode, we talked about Sandman, which I have never read. And you have. And you are a f- were a fan of. Yeah, I read it probably, though, 15 years ago. So I, I liked Sandman, but... When we were talking about it, I was like, I really need to refresh myself because it's been quite a while. So we read Sandman, Preludes and Nocturnes by Neil Gaiman, Sam Keith, and Michael Drengenberg. It is the first six? I think so. Six or so issues of Sandman. If you don't know the story of Sandman, Sandman is the god of dreams. He's the lord of dreams. Lord of dreams. And... This book starts out with him being captured by a man named Roderick Burgess in 1916. And Sandman is held hostage. Well, they're trying to catch his, they're trying to catch death, but they got Morpheus, AKA Sandman. And they're trying to catch death. Who is his sister? Which I think to me, that's my favorite part of the whole Sandman series is not just, you know, Morpheus, but it's like, the endless i like the endless i like hearing about the siblings and stuff so this book was a little boring for me because i was ready to get back into delirium and destruction and despair and all them wait i'll just like throw it all out there now I'm gonna spoil it now everybody's gonna press stop so morpheus is held hostage until 1988 when he escapes and he is on the path the search for his tools because he has lost all his power so he's on the search for a pouch, his helmet, and a ruby. Did you, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Do you remember that episode of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia where he's like, I need my tools. 
yes. in my tool? <laughs> yes, Dennis. That's what, in a, you know, slightly different context, but I kept thinking of that when I was reading it. He needs his tools. He needs his tools. So the majority of this storyline is him searching for his tools in various places. <sighs> I just, I want to like it, but there's the art is really what, I mean, I know Vertigo is known for its kind of out there art and it's crazy writing, but Sam Keith just doesn't can do it for you. Doesn't work for this book. What did you like about, about this book? This book in particular, um, it's good to get that backstory and that I kind of forgot all this stuff, you know. So it was good to get the backstory and you know, the beginning of his his kind of mindset shift where he was going to become more you know involved and embrace his power more. I guess is what I'm trying to say. So I liked that. But like I said earlier, I was kind of just like, I think it's kind of the same way when I read a Neil Gaiman book and it kind of starts slow and it takes me a minute to get into it. And there's a lot of extra stuff in there that I'm kind of, because I'm roll, I'm ADHD, I'm like, get to the point, get to the point. This is taking forever. Get to the point. Pontificating. Yes. <laughs> there's a lot of pontificating. He goes the whole first issue without talking. Maybe even half of the second. And then it's just, I am off on my quest. I must find my tool, my tools. <laughs> and so, you know, the Cain and Abel thing, when he went to hell. I like, so Cain and Abel pop back up. Spoiler alert. But, and I like Cain and Abel. It's, they're kind of funny. It's an interesting dynamic. But yes, it, it's odd in the beginning where you're like, oh, okay. The one thing that I found interesting is that when I started reading comics, Vertigo and the DCU, totally different worlds. Yes. Different different buckets, if you will. And so this book has several mainstream heroes. I made a little list here. There's a mention of Wesley Dobbs, who is the Golden Age Sandman, the first Sandman. Uh, Martian Manhunter and Mr. Miracle show up for a brief moment. The Martian Manhunter thing was interesting. So when I read this the first time, I had very little background knowledge of DC Comics. So these are all things I missed. And now reading it again, it was kind of fun. That is one thing I liked is that I have more comic book knowledge. I mean, not like a ton, but I was able to pick up on some of these nods. So like I recognized Martian Manhunter. Um, I knew about the original Sandman because you had told me about it. But it was kind of fun to pick them out and to see the little. I do appreciate that Neil Gaiman actually threw in one of the inside jokes from Justice League where a Martian Manhunter likes Oreos. Oh, really? That's from Justice League? That's from Justice League. I just thought it was like a weird thing. No, Justice League International, which was where they kind of made it more humorous. This one. Oh, okay. On the wall up there. On the wall. That That was a more humorous take on the Justice League, and he developed a love of oreos so that was a little haha -ha. scarecrow really fit into this because um dr destiny was in arkham asylum and as he's escaping because he has sandman's ruby we get to see scarecrow doing crazy scarecrow things yeah it was creepy <laughs> you know, that's like the stuff i didn't so because i'm kind of squeamish that's kind of stuff i'm like um I didn't like that part. But he was like, you'll be back. Everyone comes back to Arkham. And yeah, the Dr. Destiny stuff was weird. That was, yeah, that was weird for me. I could have done without that stuff. The cafe The cafe. Situation. And I know it's just like, to each their own, like whatever. Some people probably like, thought that was really interesting and dark. And like, it shows you the power of the ruby or whatever, how it corrupts, you know, a human soul, whatever. To me, I'm just kind of like, I feel like that was dragged out way longer way too long than it had to be we could have seen the power of the ruby and what it did to dr d in a couple pages and i would have been i feel like i would have had the same impact but i'm squeamish so pontificating pontificating and we skipped over constantine mm -hmm. which i didn't know who constantine was the first time i read this and, you know, I've just seen the movie, so I haven't read any of the comic books. So he's different in comics than he is, you know, in the movie. But he 
had that issue was weird. That was a little weird. The the sand keeping the his girl his ex girlfriend alive. Well, and like they were like living guts all over the. Yeah, walls. that was her dad. Yeah, it was so. Ugh. That was a little weird to me. And and again, the art was really disturbing. I know it's supposed to, it's kind of supposed to be grotesque. I know it's supposed to be a little horror esque, which is fine. But I. I want to like this book. I want to re- reiterate that. You're going to like it more later. <laughs> I want to like this book, but the hell issue bored me, even with Etrigan. And I appreciate I appreciate anyone who writes the demon and has the rhyming scheme. Mm-hmm. That takes a lot of effort. But man, I just couldn't. And really, it got to the death issue, which I feel like I've read somewhere because I knew when that... when. That dude's the like skateboarding talk- guy. Yeah, he's yeah. like, hey, or no, it's like basketball or something. Oh yeah, soccer or something like that. I'll see you soon. Yeah, she's like, yeah, you will. I was like, oh yeah, yeah. but be- but death basically telling him to shut up and stop pouting because he got all his stuff back. Oh, let's go real real quick. When he was with Doctor Destiny, and Doctor Destiny took him to that dream world. And he expelled all the power of the ruby, mm-hmm. thus giving him, him free. Did that not make you think a little bit of WandaVision? You know, it didn't at the time, but now that you bring it up, it kind of does. Yeah. I want to like this book. I, as a kid, as a kid, as a teen, you know, you you fall in love with comics and you want to be, when you realize that you're not a good artist, you start thinking, maybe I'm a good writer. And I've had, you know, concepts in my mind that are similar to some of these things. I never read Sandman. So some of these things are like, wow, that's that could have worked if I tried that because Neil Gaiman thought of it, too. So, yeah, I'm not abandoning it. Well, he has really good. He has really interesting ideas and he's a really interesting concept. It's just sometimes he gets a little too. Pontificating. Yeah. But now that we're into the part where he's with death and this part was way more entertaining and in, like I'm more engaged now. Like I want to read, you know, the rest of it because I'm like, oh, OK, this is more exciting. This is more interesting. Intriguing is the word I want to use. It's more intriguing. Mm-hmm. I didn't like the part where death went and got that little baby because that made me sad. But yeah, I'm but invested, death's, so. death's just doing death's doing her job. Her job. You know, we did. We really timed this well with Netflix releasing the cast of Sandman. Yeah. What are they doing? I think I do a movie or a show. I think it's a show. I honestly don't know. Did they did they release who's going to be Morpheus? Some British dude, Tom Sturridge. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. I don't know who the hell that is. I don't know who that is either. So I don't know any of the cast. I saw that they cast everyone. Well, that's good. It means and it's I was underway. Like, okay, cool. Thanks, but I don't know. I just thought it was funny that it's like I'm releasing a Sandman podcast as they are. Is this seems timed? It is not timed either. Like I, re- I assure you all, this is not timed. But it might work in our favor. So, in closing, I want to believe. I know that some the art gets better. It does get better. I remember that because I know Chris Bicolo does an issue, and Chris Bicolo does death the high cost of living yes which was good or the cost of living. the art was really good in that. that and i think that another book that i hope is on we got comiXology unlimited for this we did and i know that shade the changing man is on there now that book is a trip but in a good way i don't know what that is also on the wall of fame oh it's the guy with the apple on the face yes okay cool but no avatar in comiXology unlimited right I don't know what the you hell. You have to look it up so I can read Avatar. <laughs> you you have access to this app as well as I do, so read at your own leisure. Now that it's summertime for you. Summer, I'm so excited. Well, our first trip out of this state, and where are we going? We're gonna go on down Texas. Texas. We're gonna go see South Fork. That's it for Sandman. It's. If I was doing a thumb, it would be in the middle. Well, we just started it. It's a slow start. I just can't believe that they must have really had faith in him because someone just handed me the first issue 
I'm not coming back. Yeah, I so can they, see that. They really believed in him. I can, you know, obviously he did a good job. It won a lot of awards. He's super famous now, but. Was he super famous when he wrote it? Oh. He was like, no. Medium famous? No. He was a comic book writer. He went from a comic book writer to Neil Gaiman. You know, when you go outside your own medium and you are known to people who haven't ever been in a comic book store. Well, and he wrote that episode of Doctor Who. He like, he was writing for Doctor Who and he wrote like one of the best episodes of Doctor Who ever. So he does what he wants now and makes a lot of money. What episode was it? It was the one where um, the TARDIS was a woman. Haven't seen it. It's Matt Smith. Well, I stopped watching it. Okay. Well, we're going to have to watch that. Oh, will we? It's good. Okay. Well, we still got to watch Debris. Well, yeah. I'm going to start watching it without you. I will watch Debris if you watch the Fast and the Furious with me. No. How many Fast and the Furious are we talking about? Three. Three Fast and the Furious? The three originals for 10 episodes of Debris. Fast and the Furious 1, 2, and 3? Fast and the Furious, 2 Fast, 2 Furious, Tokyo Drift. I was going to say, is Tokyo Drift in there? Tokyo Drift will be the end. Okay. Deal. Deal. On record, on recording. Okay. We will come back and talk Fast and the Furious. Fine. Whatever. <laughs> Cars go fast. Vroom, vroom. <laughs> too Fast, Too Furious is the best movie of the series, and I will fight anyone who Isn't says otherwise. Isn't it just based off that movie from the 90s? <laughs> like, the Fast and the Furious, it's it's like based off that surfer movie. Oh, Point Break. Yeah. <laughs> the first one is basically Point Break with cars. Okay. But the second one is like Dukes of Hazard because it's just crazy. All right, fine. <laughs> I'll Whatever. take it. Thank you once again. Do you have any behavior tips for us or you want to talk to your podcast real quick? Do I have behavior tips? Yeah. Throw oh. it. Throw it. My behavior tip of the day is because, you know, where I'm at, I'm not in a good place and I have not been utilizing my coping skills. Is utilize your coping skills, everybody. Utilize those positive outlets. You know, find the things that work for you so that you're not taking behavior personally. It's important that I don't take Susan's behavior personally because it's not an attack on me. It's just that she's incompetent. So I need to utilize my coping skills and positive outlets so that I can detach and look at behavior objectively. The behavior source. Behavior source. Anywhere you find your podcast, what's your socials? On Instagram, we're The Behavior Source. And on Twitter, we are Behavior Behavior Source. Source. But we're getting back into it with summer rolling around for both of us. Um, So we should be recording soon and have a new episode for that's everybody. funny because this will be our second to last episode of punch the timeline because we're taking a summer break so we're gonna trade yes you're you're tagging in okay so you will hear one more from me which is an interview that i've already done and then you won't hear from me for a couple of months but i will be working and i will be elsewhere you never know where somebody's gonna show up the forbidden door is open and i am everywhere Thank you once again, Julia. Remember that time that the AT&T guy <laughs> didn't hear you right? And now your AT&T email is Julia? Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Julia from the Behavior Source. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's get out of here. Okay. Hey, thanks for listening to the show. Coming back next episode with Ed Cannell. Also, this will be the last episode that I am recording on my old mixer that I've had for, I would say, 14 years. So we're finally doing some upgrades and just trying to do everything I can to make this podcast the best podcast it can be and just having fun. We're talking comics, we're talking wrestling, we're talking movies. As you can tell, I've convinced Julie to watch Fast and Furious. So look for more content. I will be everywhere. And thanks again for listening to Punch the Timeline. And don't forget... Tim Drake is the best Robin, and I will fight you over it. Have a great day, everybody. Social media. You can follow me on Twitter at Grumpy Old Jared. You can find the podcast on Twitter at Timeline Punch. And you can follow the podcast on Instagram at Punch the Timeline. You can find my social media on Twitter and Instagram at Good Guesswork. 
And you can follow me over on twitch.tv as Good Guesswork. I stream over there every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Feel free to drop by and say hi. Social media! That's not how we do it in Texas. A Not in Texas production.